Hi guys, so in the run up to the end of the Brexit transition period, there were reports in the media that UK companies were being asked by the UK government not to criticize Brexit publicly. Now what was happening is companies were um, you know, putting in their work for tender, they were winning a contract, and then they were discovering in the contract or unofficially, they were being asked by the British government, Boris Johnson's administration, not to publicly criticize Brexit. Now, this brings us forward to today where we have Graham, uh, Graham Harari, who is the head of Ford of Britain. And he's going to talk about how Brexit is going pretty well for Ford and how things, including free ports, are a huge benefit for his industry. He's going to be inter interviewed by LBC. Now, he's also going to leave out some very important information, but don't worry, I'll fill you in on that. How much has Brexit, the reality of Brexit, impacted supply chains and what effects it had on your business? The, the restructuring, restructuring that we've done over the last 12 months has been really to ensure that we can be ready for the future. Uh, so we've reshaped the business so that um, uh, we can be profitable and grow profitably as we uh, embark on this journey into electrification that is really upon mm. us. Um, our Brexit plans were very comprehensive. Uh, and um, we really appreciated the government con concluding a deal uh, just before uh, the end of last year, and also a UK-Turkey deal, which was really important for us as well. Um, we have had some uh, challenges at the borders, but they've been relatively moderate at this point, and we've been able to work through them. So everything is pretty good. I think it's important to remember that, well, back in July 20, uh, the 22nd of July 2020, it says here in the in the Guardian, UK gives Ford 500 million in loan guarantees to support exports. It goes on to say the UK uh, the UK government has given Ford 500 million pounds in loan guarantees shortly before the U US uh, car maker closed one of its three British factories with the loss of 1,700 jobs. UK export finance, the government's trade finance department, gave a 500 million pound guarantee to support a 625 million pound loan by commercial banks to Ford of Britain. The government last year gave a guarantee of the same size to Jaguar Land, Ro Land Rover. So the government have given 500 million pounds to Ford, even though they were closing some of the factories in order to keep those factories open and to help export. Um, what do you think <laughs> the government asked for in return? Tom, what kind of what kind of challenges? Uh, mainly uh, paperwork related topics. Um, mm. We've uh, worked very hard to ensure that we can maintain supply. Uh, we've, we've built uh, a little bit of extra stockpile to, to help us through that. I'm not, I'm not saying here, I want to be very clear, I'm not saying that um, Ford didn't suffer any consequences of Brexit and he even said that there were some challenges. But it sounds strange that you know, a company that was given five hundred million pounds in loan guarantees, is coming out and saying, "Yeah, everything's pretty going pretty well with Brexit." Many many companies are suffering. Surely, even Ford itself. We've seen even companies who op who specialize in logistics have been suffering the consequences of Brexit. Um, and we continue to work to optimize those paperwork systems now. Do, um, do do, yeah, and I wonder whether you anticipate that getting easier as people get used to it, or is it sort of stuck that it's going to be quite difficult for some time and slow you down? I think what we're finding is there's a, there's a new normal now, which is uh, there's a little bit more activity required to ensure that there is free free flowing parts of the borders. But that's one of the other advantages of our Dagenham location. Um, I'm sure your viewers are aware that we were appointed as a free port of the UK just last week. So it was, isn't it interesting that Dagenham was uh, was appointed a free port? Now I've talked about free ports before. This is on the Wikipedia page. It says here, some special economic zones are called free ports. Sometimes they have historically been endowed with favorable customs regulations, such as the free port of Trieste in Italy. As Britain was proposing the creation of 10 free ports after leaving the European Union in early 2020, the EU was clamping down on 82 free ports after finding that their special status had aided the financing of te terrorism, money laundering and organised crime. 
So the European Union is closing down free ports while the UK is opening them up. And Ford is, uh, seems to be moving some of their operations to the free port or the free port, the, the operation that they have at the moment is being converted into a free port. Why? If everything is going well, why do you need to reduce taxes and reduce regulations for Ford? Something, something fishy for me. That's a tremendous, again, another boost in the arm of the, uh, uh, for us at D Dagenham and Ford. That's alongside DP World uh, and Tilbury. And that allows us to really change the game at Dagenham and put some new activity on, uh, some centres of excellence, really, that will allow us to experiment in automa automation and digitalisation. So a real opportunity for us to also deal with some of those customs challenges from that Freeport location. Yeah. What? How is... If your customs regulations regarding free ports, but that's about exporting into the rest of the UK, that's not about exporting to the EU because the restrictions are going to be the same. The, re the regulations are going to be the same. There's no benefit for exporting into the EU if you're a, a free port. I'm not sure what he's talking about here. Just Yes, and those free ports have come about as a result of, of Brexit. And you say that... OK, I'm not sure exactly what Tom is saying here. Is, is he trying to say that because of Brexit, now the UK can have free ports? That's not true, because the UK had free ports up until the year 2020, uh, 2012, and then it decided to close them down while the UK was a member of the European Union. And I also said in the on the Wikipedia page, the European Union is closing down free ports in the EU because of these problems. It's not a requirement of Brexit. They're going to allow you to do things differently that you wouldn't have been able to do inside the EU? Absolutely. I think... Um, I... <laughs> OK, so what will it allow you to do that you couldn't do within the EU? If, you, if the UK could ha or had free ports before as a member of the EU, either... Graham doesn't understand what a free port is, he doesn't understand that the UK used to have them, or he doesn't understand trade between the UK and the EU. I think there, there's about um, 10 or 12 that will be uh, around the country. Um, we, we are seeing this as a great opportunity, not only for customs, but also for some tax reform in those locations. There we go. Tax reform. It's about reducing the the tax burden on these companies. So these companies will be able to, isn't it interesting that they don't actually have to move the production to the free port, the free port was brought to them. So what sort of regulations are going to be allowed in these free ports? What sort of uh, tax status will these free ports have? I'm all for helping businesses. I'm fully on board for helping businesses to succeed. But this is about, this seems to be something different. Locations mm. that allows us to invest differently, but also think, think very diff differently about the future of the auto industry. Uh, so we're very committed to the Dagenham area and we're committed to continue to invest in that location. Would you like to see free ports extended? I, I think free ports have, have their role, um, particularly where they they create an opportunity to, to level up. Um, and as you know, the Dagenham area is, is one of the more deprived areas across the country. They're, they actually don't level up, they actually level down because you're taking something from one place and you're investing it somewhere else. Like you don't create new jobs in the Freeport, especially here, if, the, if this, um, this Dagenham area has been converted into a Freeport, you're not actually creating any new jobs because you already have the staff. So what is, what is, what is the benefit of the free port here? Who's benefiting from the free port? Because the government aren't benefiting because they're receiving less revenue in uh, in taxes. It seems to be the company is benefiting, but surely someone else within the party <laughs> is benefiting the government, or the government itself is benefiting in some other way. So that levelling up is not is not about a north south divide. It's actually about mm -hmm. levelling up within within uh, communities as well. So I th it, it, no, it's not. It doesn't level up. It 
what it does is it creates a scenario where some companies will move there, but they'll move their production from somewhere else. So someone will benefit, yes, but at someone else's cost. That's how it always works. Now, I'm not saying it's there would there will be no new businesses starting up in free ports. Yes, perhaps there will be, there will be some uh, new businesses, but Ford is not a new business. Once again, who is benefiting from this? It doesn't seem to be the exchequer. And what about this 500 million pound loan? What did the government get in return for this? I think um, anything that allows uh, significant investments to take place in locations is, is a good thing to facilitate. Okay, let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?